A few days ago, I was at a Joe Dispenza workshop. So today I wanna to share some of the highlights I took away from that. There's a slight caveat here. Joe is very scientific as well as bridging the gap between science and energy and more of the mystical side of, of life. Um, I am totally not scientific. Um, my brain is very much on the energy side. So some of the stuff I struggle with um, at the moment, but I, I will look to improve that over time. But I wanted to share some of the stuff that I learned anyway, and I will be referring to my trusty notebook um, in case I forget anything. So if you don't know Joe Dispenza, Joe is, was an, uh, uh, you know, a classic traditional neuroscientist, whatever that means, um, but he always had a, uh, an appetite for the alternative he very much was driven by uh, wanting to produce work and evidence that fitted in with the critics. And then as he got older, he's like, why the hell would I want to do that? You know, I want to do what I want to do sort of thing and damn the critics, damn the people that are going to call this a load of shit. So he's kind of evolved over time. And he also had a, a really bad accident where he broke his back. He was doing, I think it was something like a, a, an Iron Man or something and he got hit off his bike and ended up breaking his back. And the diagnosis from the hospital was to do surgery, which was gonna leave him in a body cast for quite a few weeks, maybe months, to sort of reset itself. But that was always ever gonna give him limited flexibility uh, and movement. And he really didn't want it. So um, he refused surgery and he then basically set upon his own journey of self-healing which um, involved a lot of time spent floating in a in a lake um, with a friend helping him um, and a lot of mind work that was I read about that I think it's in breaking the habit of being yourself which is the which is the book I enjoyed the most out of Joe's because it's the less tech it's the less scientific I guess um, it's an absolutely amazing book totally recommend it um, to anyone that hasn't tapped into Joe yet. If you're into <laughs> out of the box, if you're into meditation, if you're into the idea of self-healing, then uh, Joe is the man for you. Um, at this event, there was a woman, I mean, he's had, he's got a lot of stories now of um, <clears throat> people that have taken on his teachings and done the work, the meditations. I say work, it's not really work, it's meditations, it's intentions and all the rest of it. People have healed themselves from cancer, Parkinson's, <clears throat> arthritis, uh, eczema, asthma, you name it, excuse me. Um, you know, fatal, terminal. When the doctors had given them a, you know, pretty poor di uh, prognosis. So, um, and there was a woman at our event actually, and um, I don't think it, I think she just approached him to, to explain how she was getting on. She basically got multiple sclerosis, never know how to say that. She had it for 32 years and she was at the event and she basically got on stage to say that she'd noticed that her walking had started to improve already. And she was completely numb pretty much, her head, her body, and that numbness had started to dissipate to the point where she was actually getting irritated. She could feel her skin under her arm, uh, under her armpit sort of thing. And uh, it was irritating her, but she said that's a really good problem to have because I couldn't feel it before. So that was pretty amazing. Um, but there's a lot of stories like that. So, <clears throat> so the big thing for us this weekend was meditation. We did a lot of meditation practice in terms of really trying to go deeper um, and lots of different exercises and he, he very much talks about um, how we are all pretty much living in the past all the time and what he means by that is that we, we tend to um, do the same stuff at the same time every day it doesn't really vary you know we wake up a lot of people are going straight for their phone whether it be Twitter Facebook Instagram, messages, iMessage, WhatsApp, you name it, you know, you're all probably smiling because we all do it. Um, but you, you check all of that, go to the loo, 
maybe put your dressing gown on, go and get a cup of tea or a drink or whatever, um, get in the shower or check your emails or, and then we get dressed and then we either drive to work or we get on the laptop and then we do the normal stuff, we'll make phone calls, we'll answer emails, we'll do, you know, we'll have tea at the same time, coffee at the same time, biscuits at the same time. And it continues, lunchtime, you know, it continues all throughout the day. And then we go to bed and then we get up and do exactly the same thing again. So basically the brain has hardwired into these uh, automated, uh, automated processes, automated routines that we, we are all sleepwalking through to a, to a certain degree. Now you might be sitting there thinking, yeah, but we've got to do all of that, Mel, because we've got jobs to do and we've got families to... Sorry, slight interruption there. My mother's trying to phone me. I will call her back. Um, but yeah, so you might be saying, yeah, well, we've got to do all of that. You know, that's, that's, that's life. Yeah, to a point, but too many of us are sleepwalking through life. Too many of us are just accepting that as a norm. Too many of us are sitting watching shit TV every night when we could be actually doing a whole lot more with our time, learning a new skill, hobbies. At the moment, I'm learning to play the guitar. Um, you know, books, self-development, you know, you know, walking, exercising, cycling, whatever. We could be doing anything but watching shit soaps. Um, I stopped watching soaps a long time ago. But that, that's basically what it is. So the, the brain already knows what you're gonna do tomorrow um, because you, you've done it yesterday, you've done it for the last three years. So we're always living in the past. And if we're not living in the past, then we could be living in the future because we're thinking about, oh, so when I, when I go on holiday in two weeks time and then when I do this and then maybe, you know, I'll get that promotion in three months and then blah, blah, blah. Um, and we're, all of that energy that we are projecting onto all of these things, you know, all the past stuff, all our past memories, our shit with our ex, our problem with our parents when we were kids, you know, all of that stuff and then all the future stuff. Oh, will I ever find the true love? Will I ever do this? Will I ever do that? I really want to do that. And our energy is just going in a million different ways and we're not we're not today we're not here in today we're not present and in today because we're thinking about the past we're thinking about the future and that's that's making our energy lower therefore we haven't got enough to give to today therefore we walk around sleepwalking therefore we walk around and want and then want to watch shit shit soaps or shit films of an evening to lose ourselves to escape in it it's escapism but it's not helping anything. It, it's We're not growing. You know, living in the past is the moment somebody stops evolving. And I did that a lot myself uh, a few years ago. I was constantly thinking about a past relationship, um, which was fucking draining, I have to tell you. But I didn't realise it at the time. I just thought, oh no, I'm never going to find anything that felt that amazing. And... Um, even though the majority of it was shit, to be honest, but the, the, the good bits weren't that good that I never forgot them. So, um, yeah, I've been there and it's crap. And it didn't get me anywhere. <clears throat> Although I can't, I can't actually say that because even though I, I held on to that for far too long, um, <clears throat> it's been a huge lesson for me in terms of uh, never ever getting that kind of um, uh, attachment on something again um, and and allowing me to sort of come full, full circle in terms of realising who I am, my worth, my self-worth and all that sort of thing. So yeah, stop living in the past if you are because you're not evolving. Um, the other big thing we learned was meditation, there's no such thing as bad meditation because I very often will meditate and think I uh, don't think I did that very well, didn't really feel too much, didn't really do this, didn't really do that. But some days you're just not going to, and some days you're going to have a, a much better experience. So um, no such thing as bad meditation. And, and the other thing was you need to feel emo the emotion from med meditation as though it's already happened. So something I'm, I've been really bad at is setting intentions before the meditation. So for example, you know, I've got an interview tomorrow. And I could be setting the intention that, you know, I'm going to have the most amazing interview. 
Um, we're going to get on like a house on fire. He's going to offer me the biggest pay rise I've ever had. You know, anything like that, I could, I could be and should be and will be uh, setting those intentions. And you need to be setting them with elevated emotion. So before you set those intentions, you've really got to think about how you're going to be feeling when you achieve those intentions. So if I walk into this interview tomorrow, correction, when I walk into this interview tomorrow and I get offered a 20k uh, pay rise on my basic, uh, a ridiculous commission structure uh, and amazing perks and it's going to be an amazing job, etc, etc. How is that actually going to make me feel? Do I think as I sit here now? Well, I'm going to feel like the fucking dog's bollocks. I'm going to feel gratitude. I'm going to feel joy. I'm going to feel excited. I'm going to feel fucking like somebody sees my worth, you know, and, and all things like that. So you, if you if you really can feel the elevated emotions that you're going to feel on the back of your intentions coming into fruition, then that is so powerful. Um, and I'll give you an example of that in a minute that we were given at the weekend. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so in terms of the meditation, this is where I need to get my laptop off a minute. So this is where it gets a little bit scientific and I'm not. So we have four different brain waves. We have um, alpha, beta, theta, and delta. That might not be in the right order. I've just gone in alphabetical there. No, I haven't, because delta was last. But anyway, uh, you get what I mean. And beta is your when your uh, activity, you're awake, you're, uh, you're aroused, whatever. High beta is when you're in a state of flight, fight or flight. So you're in a highly stressed um, emotion. <clears throat> Down from that is... So, and this is what I love actually, because as Mel and Sarah, um, he's made it really easy for me to remember this. So, there are two times a day when the door to the subconscious mind open up. When we go to bed at night, that's when Mel comes in. So, it's the neurotransmitter melatonin that comes in um, and makes our brain waves go from beta to alpha. Then from alpha to theta and from theta to delta. So delta is when you're asleep. Beta's awake, delta's asleep. And then you've got in between, you've got alpha, which is sort of um, a, a highly relaxed um, state. And then you've got theta, which is much more heavily relaxed, meditation, visualizing, that sort of thing. And then in the daytime, when you wake up in the morning, you've got Sarah, and Sarah is serotonin. And that's the daytime neurotransmitter, which creates the same process I've just talked about in reverse. So you then go from delta back up to beta. So, actually, I remember that a bit better, even though I've had to refer to the laptop, but you get what I mean. So, so what Joe, Dr. Joe's been able to do is he's done a lot of experiments measuring brain waves, and he's been able to take people into different states um, that, well, they've, they've taken themselves into states with guidance from him. And then he's measured the brain waves to see where they are. And people can be conscious and in delta, which is when you're normally asleep, and be um, uh, experiencing uh, amazing things, basically. So, <clears throat> And uh, the, the big tip really in terms of getting yourself into that nicely calm meditative state is having a broad focus. It's very much about being no one from nowhere. Um, you are no thing. It, it's basically, you, you've almost got to take yourself out of... Um, who you are, what I, you know, what I look like. My name is Mel, I've got long blonde hair, I'm short, I'm curvy. I've got to forget all of that. I've got to forget that I am in sales. I've got to forget that I've got a son. I've got to forget all of that just for, the, for that meditative state and just be no one in nothing um, from nowhere. So you basically close your eyes, you relax, you, you see this darkness and then you just, you just allow yourself to relax. Um, 
and I, I do guided meditations that Joe's done, which really helps that process. And when you actually get to that state, and it happened for me a few times over the weekend, your head starts to go when your eyes are closed. You're not asleep. You're very aware of what's going on. But it's that whole, you know, when you fall asleep on a plane and you, your head's doing that sort of thing. But you're not actually falling asleep. Your head's just doing that because the brain waves have slowed down that much. You've gone into uh, theta or del uh, delta. Um, and that's why your head does that. So, and you, it's then validation that you're in the right place, really. Um, <clears throat> didn't realise how long this video was going to be, but I'm going to continue um, and maybe I'll do another one uh, when I just finish this part. So, Delta is restorative sleep, um, but you can be wide awake in Delta and have a mystical state, basically, which is what a lot of people have done. Um, I'll just say brain orgasm. I won't go into into any more detail right now, but possible. Um, and you, yeah, you've got to get beyond the memory of, of your known self, which is what I just said. So, yeah, and then the other big thing really is the more, so the people that have been able to manifest health when they've been really badly ill, the people that have actually manifested things, jobs, opportunities, money, are the people that A, have set the intentions with very clear, elevated emotions and have, and have done the work for that every day. It's not just a case of, oh, I'll sit and meditate 15 minutes, think about my inten intentions, how do I feel? Job done. Because I kind of felt like that was what you could do with Abraham Hicks teachings, if you know Abraham Hicks, you know, very much the message there is if you put it out to the universe you only need to do it once the universe knows and um, you don't have to keep asking asking it is given however a lot of us don't get it <laughs> and that and that if 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 um if joe's teaching bridges that gap is because we are too much in the doing and action and stress and, and all that sort of thing and we're not allowing things to come to us so we're keeping it at arm's length so when you do the regular meditation you are basically almost opening a portal if you like for want of a better phrase to shorten the gap between what you what is there for you and where you are right now because the more you don't do that it affects everything the less creative you are the less loving you are, the less this you are, the, le the more stressed you are, it has an impact because you're not allowing yourself any space or any time to just be your inner you, your consciousness, without all the shit that goes on around us all the time. So the more you can do this on a regular basis, the shorter that gap then becomes. And the shorter the gap that it then becomes, the quicker you will get those manifestations and that's in anything health money relationships whatever so i'm going to leave it there for now because this is quite a long video um and i'll probably continue tomorrow or it might not be tomorrow it might be friday because i've got a full-on day tomorrow but we'll see might be able to do it tomorrow um so see you on the next one bye